Is Outer Wilds worth playing in 2021? Outer Wilds review. What a unique and weird trip this game was. Last time I was stunned with a game like this was with Disco Elysium. It is no wonder that Outer Wilds was nominated for the Game of the Year in 2019, and it's for sure no wonder that it won a lot of accolades in the last few years. This game, if you can call it a game, is exploration open space adventure. And I'll give a warning to some people here. Those that express anxieties, fear from open space and detest discovery and puzzles should avoid the game. Those that would like to experience innovation and something brand new should immediately try Outer Wilds. Now, why did I say if you can call it a game? Because it's not a game, it's art. Art that 95% of people, they just won't be able to comprehend or understand this game. You need some real life experience, ups and downs, incarnation and time loops understanding to love and appreciate this game. Your soul will need to be enlightened and mind will need to be open for outer worlds to take effect. To have those, you'll probably need to be about 30 years of age, 30 years old and above, with interest into why do we even live in your mind. Greatest masterminds and artists were never recognized on this planet while they were alive, because they were ahead of their time, just like Outer Wilds is ahead of its own time, with its huge soul presented to it on a platter. Awakening, a real awakening. You need to experience awakening in order to understand this game. With all of this said and done, so just let's begin with sections and rate Outer Wilds properly as it deserves. First section is the story. Idea behind the story is just phenomenal and everything I said here can spoil the story so I'll be very careful in trying to explain it all in short. You are in a galaxy God knows where and in what time, it doesn't even matter, you take a ship and all you know from the very start is that your mission is to explore all the planets that circle around the sun. It's simple as that, till you die two times out of nowhere and maybe realize, just like I did after two deaths, the reason for your deaths. Little hint, watch the sun when you hear the mesmerizing music, you'll know, you'll definitely know it when you hear it. After that discovery, game opened up, story opens up, and this game becomes so freaking immersive that you'll always wonder what to do next and what happened with this broken ship in deep space or what's on the bottom of the ocean, for example. Mysterious story, slow start, good pace, great presentation, and epic multiple endings. I really don't want to spoil it for you. In my book, this is a pure 10 out of 10 story. Next section, game bugs and optimization. This game has bugs, all right? It just has bugs. Some of them can be depressing and game-breaking, but thank God you lose only 22 minutes if they happen. Mega fast loading times, not a single crash in 22 hours for me. The game is optimized very well, the game works great. In other words, 9 out of 10 for the game time. Uh, game bugs. <laughs> game time is the next section. This all depends on the player, how fast you detect and think along the way. For me, it took 22 hours to finish the game. If I had a second run, I could finish this game in less than 6 hours for sure. If I want to speed run it, I guess less than 20 minutes is required. If you want to discover every question mark and cover every planet on 100%, you'll need more than 30 hours for sure. Some will take 10 hours. I mean, some of the players will take 10 hours. Some will take 50 hours to 60 hours. As I said, it all depends from a player, so average is 30 hours, I guess. I got stuck on some planets, some puzzles were devastating, 
and you should always think outside of the box, if I can say it like that, if you plan to finish this game. Replay value is low. 8 out of 10, because I really wish this game was longer, not bigger, only longer. Game difficulty, that's the next section. I would say it's hard, hard to learn and master. With that, I'm uh, presume, you know, that you like to play games with no arrow above your head. All right. So every time it's going to be a different expedition. There is no combat, so it's not hard in the classic terms. How do you value games by combat? Eh? It's hard. This game is hard on your nerves, especially that ending. I failed 10 times in a row before I could finish this game. Puzzles were extremely hard on some spots. In other words, this game will require your best imagination in order to finish it. It could be one of the hardest games there is to actually finish on your own. 10 out of 10 for the difficulty. Maps and graphics is the next section. Amazing graphics. Space looks phenomenal. Style is quite unique great map of the universe that's on the constant move amazing and unique planets moons and asteroids all colors are covered from volcanic planets and dark sides of the moon to ocean planets and sand planets amazing diversity in planets this is a no brain 10 out of 10. next section is gameplay what do you do in this game? You'll explore planets, navigate in space, and solve puzzles. Your main thing, your main enemy, and the main thing to worry about is gravity. That's it. Is it fun? It's extremely fun. Extremely immersive. That's all you need to know. What's bad? Flying your ship can be very clunky, but you'll get used to it after a few hours. I enjoyed every minute of gameplay. 10 out of 10. Next section, leveling and itemization. There is no experience in this game, so no leveling below. There is no inventory in this game, so no items to be found. So what is it? You'll have your frequency detector, your scout, your spacesuit, your spaceship, and your translator, the most important thing in the game. To compensate on lack of leveling and itemization, your ship will have amazing journal full with question marks and trails for your next objective what can i say innovation paid off i can't believe how good this game is with only five things in it nine out of ten for leveling and itemization next section npcs and enemies every planet has one npc to discover all of them are extremely important for the story and how the game will end they are hilarious and they're very unique. All of them are also extremely important for resolving quests. Your main enemy in the game are the most terrifying things that exist in Outer World. And I absolutely hate them. You'll know them when you see them. Because there is only one spot in the entire game where you can find them. Jokes aside and enough about them, don't want to spoil it. There is no combat in the game, so no enemies at all. It's a deep, empty space with gravity and zero gravity as your main enemy. Puzzles, gravity and zero gravity are your main enemy. You'll fight against time and universe itself. You'll fight against inevitable. That's quite a powerful enemy in my book. 10 out of 10 for NPCs and enemies. Next section. I mean, this is the last section, music and sound. Amazing music, to be honest. I don't know what's better, music or sound effects. They nailed it here. There is no voice acting at all, though. No narration at all. If some game deserves to be fully voice acted and completely narrated while translating, for example, those texts, it would be Outer Wilds. 9 out of 10, because I want to see voice acting here. Conclusion, we got nine sections with 85 points and that would be an amazing 9.4 out of 10 for Outer Wilds. I rarely 
give such high scores for games. But man, this game, I'll remember it in all of my next lives for the next 14.3 billion years ahead. Immersion is off the charts. Sadness and depression, joy and happiness, rage and feeling of success after you fail or solve the missing puzzle. The overall impact of Outer Wilds is straight supernova. It takes amazing writer and even better developers to make something like this. It's a journey of thoughts, souls and mind. It takes balls to make something like this in the era of a two mesh button brain dead mainstream games. Innovation is there for sure. Same what I said with this Coliseum, I'll say it here too. Innovation, immersion, soul. Three most important traits that both Outer Worlds and Disco thrive on. I was so sad when Outer Worlds ended. The journey was over and the ugly reality of our world, especially in the last few years, kicked in. Should you buy the game, try it and play it? Yes, immediately. No need to wait for sales, scrap all aside, open your mind and soul to this masterpiece. It will reward you like no other game when you reach its end. It will make you think about life, death, time and how small and unimportant you actually are in this universe. As it questions your very existence and purpose, no matter if you're a billionaire, famous, poor, or a beggar, we cannot carry our pockets in the ground, in the grave. Soul is the only thing that's worth nourishing and saving, and that's the message Outer Wilds sends from its start it's very finished. I'll thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.